So my name is Martin Pham. I'm a neurosurgeon at UC San Diego. And I was asked to speak on what the spine-able ecosystem means to me. So to do that, I'm going to first go back and uh, tell you why I, like many of you in the audience who went into neurosurgery or spine surgery, um, did this. So this is a picture of me as a disheveled resident. And as overworked and tired as I was, I still held on to two ideals. And the first is that I wanted to help people. And the second is that I wanted to do this job to the absolute very best of my ability. Now, over the course of my time as a resident at USC, I was very fortunate to help many patients along the way. And in particular, what's most humbling about these photos is all these patients knew that I was a resident, and yet they still asked to take a picture with me. And that was so that they could remember the person who helped them. And I helped them through cranial surgeries, and then over time, as I found the spine, through spine surgeries. Now, the spine surgeries that we did uh, as a chief resident at Big County at USC, we didn't have much. There was no spine attending staff that came over. Uh, I had a fluoroscope, and that was it. Right? But despite that, I did the very best that I could to rebuild and realign the spine with what we had and the tools that we had, which, of course, not much, but something where, within the goals and what I want to do for patient care, I think we did okay. Tools. Now, I think they say that you could probably build anything with the right tools. So say I wanted to build a house, but say I didn't have the right tools, and all I had, just like Big County at USC, were just my hands and effort. And in that case, I could probably build a decent dwelling, right? halfway decent. But if I wanted to build something more substantial, right, probably wouldn't be as successful. But if you gave me something, gave me a blueprint, gave me a level, gave me power tools, gave me technology, well, now imagine then what I could build instead. Tools are just a manifestation of technology. And when I think of my humble origin story at Big County of USC, wielding a C-arm, right, trying to fend off spinal disease, I feel very fortunate that I've been able to come such a long way. And that's because someone finally gave me technology. And this technology was the able spine ecosystem that connected everything. So if you imagine for a second powerful technologies like artificial intelligence and machine learning that can help you predict and plan the most ideal surgery for your patient, or intraoperative navigation with the industry leader in surgical guidance and visualization, spinal robotics guidance system, platform solution, all those three things are very separate. But now if you imagine them connected together, communicating with each other in an ecosystem that can help you accomplish the surgical goals that you want for your patient. This is the ABLE ecosystem. And one particular component of this system that's been particularly transformative in my practice has been robotics. Now, robotics in this particular case has allowed me to pursue things like minimally invasive single position surgery, minimally invasive adult spinal deformity correction. And the way that this has transformed my practice is through the planning. Planning allows you to reach the ideal of perfection. And I think some people would argue that, well, no is perfect, and nothing is perfect. But planning gets me as close to that asymptote as possible. And whether this is through smaller degenerative surgeries, or the larger adult spinal deformity surgeries where every single detail matters, this allows me to get there. And when you look at these radiographic outcomes, these are the outcomes that the robotics and the ABLE ecosystem has allowed me to achieve. And you can see here just a very 
stunning correlation between the post-operative outcome and the preoperative plan, design, and intent. But just like I started this, behind each one of these x-rays, naturally, is a patient that I was able to help. The ABLE ecosystem for young surgeons shortens your learning curve and allows you to do and learn and accomplish the surgical techniques that you want to perform in your practice. But I would say that for the experienced surgeons, many of which here are in the audience, ABLE only enhances your skill set. As good as all of you already are with your skill and performance, technology only makes you better. So say you were the best race car driver in the world with a manual transmission. If I gave you technology, if I gave you a dual clutch transmission, if I gave you a paddle shifting sequential gearbox like the F1 drivers, you would only be faster and better. Olympic swimmers who are already at the peak of their sport when they were given technologically advanced compression suits made of carbon fiber, silver, titanium, all these hydrophobic proprietary blends, they only got faster and better and subsequently broke 140 world records in the span of two years. Suites of technologies are all around us that help us be better at what we already do. Race by construction makes cyclists faster. We have augmented reality, increasing situational awareness for our armed forces. We have advanced spacesuits that are making astronauts safer to complete their missions. We have exoskeletons that are letting personnel lift more with less strain. Technological advances are making other people better at what they already do well. And so, if you, with technology, could be better, then how could you turn that down? And so I want to end this on a story. Um, my mom comes up to me and asks me to build her a house on an empty plot of land. And I'm like, okay, if, if that's what you really want, your, your only child to build you your very own house. Um, so I plan, you know, I'm going to build her the best house I can, uh, and I'm going to be very methodical about this. Right? So the first thing I do, of course, is I'm going to get a blueprint. And in that blueprint, I'm going to put down every single detail I can, all in one place. And after I have that blueprint, I'm going to have a surveyor come out. And I want the surveyor to help me predict this construction. Right? Am I building on a hill? Is there going to be inclement weather? Do I need stronger materials or more flexible materials based off of the environment? And then, once I have that down, I'm going to have the most important components prefabricated. So instead of building everything out at the, at the field, I'm going to have the most important components of this house designed at the factory and then shipped out to me so then I can use them. And then I'm going to finally get to building this house. Once that house is built, but before the drywall goes up, before all the details go in, I'm going to have another inspector come out and look at that foundation right, to make sure everything is correct before I commit to this. And then, once I've committed, put in all the finishing touches, I'm going to have that inspector come back out again and continue to monitor this house to make sure that no repairs are needed in the long run and to make sure that the foundation is fine and that the house over time is going to be okay. Well, Plot twist, naturally it's not my mom, it's a patient in my clinic. Right? And instead of asking me to build her house, she's asking instead for me to rebuild, realign her spine in the best way I can with the most up-to-date and innovative technologies that I have available. And I tell her, well, you know, I went into this for two reasons, to help people, and to do this job to the absolute best of my ability. And to both of those, I think I can help you. Because I have the right tools and technologies to make you better. Welcome to ABLE.
Thank you.